welcome to French Toast Moto Club. Today we're going to focus on a little piece of tech called a hub sink. So the hub sink is this heat sink that sits around the hub motor of the bike providing great cooling. It's actually a two component system. It is the heat sink itself, which is this part here, as well as some Staterade or ferrofluid, which is inside the motor. So before we talk about how to put it together, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how it works. Welcome to the drawing board. Uh, I'm gonna try and draw for you an explanation of how the hub sink works. First things first, you've got your motor casing. gonna do this circle this represents our motor we'll put an M in there so you know that it's the motor now inside the motor casing you have the components of the internals of the motor itself so you have stators which will draw them as squares like this now the stators are uh, these magnetic spools that are inside the motor casing. Now, the hub sink are these series of segments of heat sink material. And they look a bit like this. And they bolt into each other with some bolts like that. And they essentially go all around our motor like that and like that now there's a few key components to making this all work that are important to understand if you simply bolted the hub sink to your motor you wouldn't get a ton of thermal efficiency and you might ask why the reason is actually right here you might note that there's a gap between the stator and the casing of the motor. And that's a, a real gap. If you were to open up this motor, there would be a gap between the magnetic stator and the motor shell. So as heat increases in this area, what ends up happening is that the air insulates that heat and retains it inside of the motor casing and not giving it a very efficient way to conduct itself out into the uh, hub sink fins. So hub sink provides a syringe of a ferrofluid called Staterade. Now that's their clever name because it's like Gatorade, right? But Staterade comes in this syringe, it's this black fluid. And what you need to do is either open up your motor casing or drill a hole and inject that Staterade in and what it does is it adds a liquid that will allow for the heat conducted from the stator to go into the hub sink or the heat sink that's on the outer side. Now this is really clever. If you're familiar with ferrofluid, uh, we played around with this in physics when I was a little kid. It's a magnetic fluid. It's a ferride, so ferrous iron based uh, fluid that is magnetic. It reacts with magnets. And if you look up ferrofluid on YouTube, you'll find tons of cool videos of it reacting and making all these cool shapes. But what ends up happening is that as you run your motor, the uh, centrifugal force will shoot the ferrofluid to the outer wall. So the ferrofluid will fill that entire gap and then it will conduct that heat outwards to your heat sink. So combined with a thermal paste, which is essentially a very heat, high heat transfer um, uh, grease, I believe, uh, that will go in between your heat sink and the outer casing with your ferrofluid inside, you've got a very thermally efficient system. So fun fact for you, the people that are souping up the QS205 motor, which is the motor in the Onyx, um, to do all kinds of drag races and really high power, um, high power situations. They're 
always using a hub sink with, uh, with ferrofluid inside or Staterade. So now that you know how it works, let me show you how to put it together. I know drilling the motor seems daunting, but it's really not that hard. So let's get uh, to it and put it all together. So you're gonna need a couple things for this project. You're gonna need a drill that is powerful enough to drill into metal. You're gonna need a drill bit that matches the diameter of your Staterade nozzle. So I check, uh, depending on where you get your Staterade, it might be a different size. Just make sure it's about the exact size of the nozzle. You're gonna need washers that fit snugly around your drill bit. You're gonna need some super glue. I also used some black Sugru, which is a moldable glue paste and then some good rubber gloves to make sure everything stays clean. You'll also need some isopropyl or some wipes to clean up any excess from uh, filling the hole at the end. Now the washers are gonna serve as a spacer, making sure I don't go too deep into the casing. We're only trying to go through the outer casing here. Now it only takes a couple seconds to get through this casing wall. Um, once we go through, we want to be super careful with the metal shavings. I didn't do the greatest job, but what you want to do is avoid getting metal shavings inside of the casing. Now in terms of quantity of Staterade, you're only gonna need to use about 12 milliliters. I used a little bit over that, which wasn't the best decision, but ultimately you're gonna want about 12. There is uh, such a thing as using too much Staterade in which you create lag. Now we're gonna to wanna to make sure we get any Staterade off the outside. It's magnetic and so it has a habit of sticking to the motor casing. Uh, so you'll wanna use some good wipes or some isopropyl alcohol and get it all off. That way we can create a waterproof seal and make sure that the motor's uh, water integrity or uh, waterproofness is maintained. So we'll get this nice and cleaned up here. And now the hard part is pretty much done. What we're gonna wanna do is patch up that hole now. Um, and I'm gonna use a combination of super glue. Now that that's hardened, I'm gonna give it a coating of Subaru, which is a, a black uh, glue type paste uh, that'll harden nicely. And it also won't be super noticeable once it's completely dry. So I'll start to apply that and I'll tell you a little bit about why someone would want to do something like this. So first and foremost, a heat sink on a hub motor is going to help with two things. It's going to help with the longevity of the motor and keep the motor happy for a longer time. And it's also going to help with performance. Now it's not going to make you necessarily go faster, but all of these motors have uh, sensors inside, thermal sensors that speak to the controller and say, hey, things are getting too hot, let's engage thermal cutback mode. Now this mode is going to really kill the performance of the bike, it's not gonna be fun to ride anymore, and it's gonna do this until things cool down. So to avoid that, uh, you can add a hub sink and Staterade like we are right now, in order to make sure that you never hit that uh, sensor warning. So ever since I've actually implemented this modification, I haven't gotten any thermal cutback warnings. And I live in a pretty hilly area. I ride on hills a lot. Sometimes I ride on hills with a passenger, never had an issue. So as far as I'm concerned, the hub sink really works. Uh, and it, it's doing its job. So I'm looking forward to getting a lot of long lasting life out of my motor. So I'll finish up applying the paste here and uh, we'll go on to adding the fins.
With Subaru, as it hardens, you can polish it off with a smooth surface object. So I'm actually using a piece of plastic just to smooth it out. Now, you can distinctly see the different colors, but I'm pleased to say that once it dries, uh, it's actually almost invisible, so you can't even tell it's there. So you're gonna wanna apply your thermal paste in a zigzag motion, making sure to use the whole tube. So if you have any leftover by the time you're done applying, make sure and go back and add some more. You want really good contact here for the best thermal conductivity. So you're going to want to slide your hub sink uh, segments in between your spokes. Now I know this isn't probably the best way to do this. I chose to not remove my rear wheel. I wanted to make it as easy as possible. So what I did is I took a piece of paper courtesy of Fremont Brewing Company uh, and uh, folded it and added it into the segments of the hub sink. That way it caught on the spokes and it wouldn't slide down and I could attach the different segments. Now, it took some trial and error to finally figure out how to do this, but eventually I was able to attach the whole thing. So all in all, do I recommend the hub sink? Absolutely. I think it's worth the money. I think it's pretty easy to install and it's gonna protect your investment and make sure that you don't hit thermal cutback when you're riding all day long. So if you have any questions about the hub sink or other modifications for the Onyx or your e-bike, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week on another episode.